Hi, I'm Josh Garman with the TJ Snow Company. Today we're going to discuss the initial startup of an Intron 6001 control. Before getting started, you may want to document all your existing weld schedules because you may need them later. Next, we're going to move on to a couple things you want to check prior to applying power to the control. The first thing you want to do before applying power is to confirm that the control is configured for the correct line voltage. The 6001 control can be set up for several line voltage configurations Please see the owner's manual for more detailed information. The Intron 6001 can be supplied with a 24 volt DC or a 120 volt AC valve option. Please confirm that you're connecting your air valve solenoid to the correct output. It's common to forget to run the small L2 wire when installing a new control. If your control doesn't have a built-in circuit breaker or wasn't pre-wired by TJ Snow, you will need to run a 12 gauge or larger wire from the L2 connection point at your transformer to the F2 fuse on transformer T1 inside the Intron cabinet. We recommend purchasing a primary or secondary coil with each Intron 6001 control. The coil offers you the ability to monitor current and use the control in constant current mode. The F key or the function key allows you to access the main menu. The up and down arrows allow you to things on the main menu. The enter key allows you to select an item on the menu, then you can scroll down and use the plus or minus key to adjust the settings. The escape key allows you to back out to the previous screen, and the weld no weld key allows you to put the control in weld with the light lit or no weld with the light out. Now we're going to discuss the initial calibration and configuration settings. To get there, hit the F key. To access the main menu, then scroll down to the About key. We're going to press the plus key in, maintain it, then press the Enter button. It's going to bring up the setup parameters. Now we're going to hit Highlight Configuration, we're going to hit the Enter key. Now you'll go through and adjust the configuration parameters as needed. The next step will be to review the calibration parameters. Now we're going to hit escape to back out one screen, down to highlight the calibration menu, hit enter to bring it up, then you'll need to set a maximum current for your machine. If you're using a primary coil, you'll need to go down and insert the proper turns ratio for the machine. This is normally listed on the transformer or you can get it by dividing the primary voltage by the secondary voltage. Now we're going to move on how to set up an initial weld schedule. You'll hit the F key again to go to the main menu. One thing to keep in mind is the use schedule chooses which schedule you're actually going to use and run, where edit schedule actually allows you to modify the schedule. The, ske you the schedule you have chosen in edit schedule is not the schedule that's going to run. It's going to read the schedule as chosen in use schedule. So now you'll go through and insert the parameters that you documented earlier by using the keypad. Typically I'm going to start off the very low schedule, three to four cycles, phase shift mode, around 30 or 40 percent. I then gradually work my way up increasing the current while welding and testing samples. Once you feel comfortable that the machine is functioning properly, you can switch to constant current mode if it is required. Once you're done with the schedule, hit escape to back to the main menu and escape again to go to status screen. That's just about it. For more technical information, please review our advanced programming video link below or contact TJ Snow directly through our website or the service department.